Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, the fab, the fab. No, it's not the Fabrizio Romano that I'm talking about. It is fan advisory board that Chelsea Football Club has um, initiated, which means fans can get involved at a board level and participate in, uh, you know, the day-to-day decision-making. Well, not really day-to-day, but operational side of the things. What does it really mean for us? We'll check in on it and a whole heap of other news that's lined up. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Let's bring out the latest in regards to this news. Let me just bring this up. Um, so here we go, uh, just like Fabrizio Romano would say it, and uh, it's it's called the Fab, as you can see over there. It's called the Fab. Chelsea invites application for new fan advisory board. Now, what does that mean? What's going on? I, I need to understand a little bit more. That those might be some of the questions that's you know floating around in your uh, mind at the moment. Well, this is what it means. It's straight from the Chelsea website. Chelsea Football Club is delighted to announce the establishment of our new fan advisory board. It's called the FAB. The FAB is an initiative to help fulfill our promise to be pioneers in fan engagement, which is fantastic. I think I think the club can do a lot in terms of fan engagement, especially in social media, on match days, um, you know, maybe even give some involvement during press conferences. I don't know. I'm just throwing some ideas out there, but I'm pretty certain uh, from a social standpoint, the, the club can do a lot more. I mean, there are other clubs that engage with fans on a regular basis, uh, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. And also uh, the fan engagement for, for uh, match-going fans as well. So I think I think the, the, the club can definitely improve on this side and further engage with fans and um, get a little bit more understanding from a fan's point of view. Further on, this goes on to... So building a success, building on successful consultation and engagement mechanism the club already has in place, the FAB will engage in discussion, exchange information, and share insight on potential decisions that impact Chelsea FC supporters, which is huge, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like that we may get a voice. Uh, now, the question you might also be thinking, well, who are going to be part of this, you know, the the the, the board? Who's going to be part of this FAB, uh, fab uh, you know, which is the fan advisory um, board? You know, how are they going to make the selection criteria? How do I, do I qualify? Um, do you qualify? So all of these questions, let's have a look. The focus will be on the club's strategic vision and objectives, as well as medium and long-term decision-making. That's huge. That's huge. You can have a voice in this. Uh, which is uh, quite phenomenal. The FAB will meet at least three times a year with Chelsea FC board members, with addition uh, senior club executives also attendance at all meetings. Fantastic. So you may even have people like Christopher Vivell, Paul Win- Winston Lee, um, you know, maybe even Todd Bowley and Iqbali might be part of this senior club executives that we can voice our opinions to. The FAB will be made up of six supporters. There you go. It will be made up of six supporters, Um Three places are reserved for our supporter advisors to the board. So three out of the six, three are reserved for our supporter advisor uh, advisors to the board. So I think uh, that may already have Daniel uh, Finkelstein, um, which will touch on one of the um, members who's quite, uh, you know, uh, ev- I suppose, like, well, you know, they're there in social media already in Twitter. The presence of that particular person is there. And, and the club is looking to identify a further three supporter via, supporters via an open application process. Chelsea FC is proud of the work our fans forum and accessible fans forum have done to improve the experience for the club supporters. These forums have made a number of important improvements since they were formed and will continue to run and provide an important source of feedback for the club with a specific focus on match day and operational issues. Now, what does these operational issues mean? Um, hopefully, it, it, it means what they talked about here, you know, the focus being on strategic vision, strategic vision and objectives, as well as a medium and long-term decision. Now, it further goes on to say a lot of other things, um, but I, I think I think this is a positive mood. Now, how much of an impact is this really going to have? Are the, are the fans really going to be able to express their opinion just the way they want to, much like now? You know, there are a lot of disgruntled fans right now not really understanding why Grand Potter is still around. I mean, we've given him enough time. Two out of 16 is the record at the moment. Two wins out of the last 16 games. And not just the managers, you know, I, I suppose 
managers' lackings at the moment. There's other factors that that we would want to raise. Uh, you know, as I said, you know, social media engagement, and I don't know. Do we even get some sort of saying as to, well, is it really? healthy to have such a bloated squad um i guess it all comes down to that strategic vision and objectives um, and medium and long-term decision making you know contracts do we get a you know talk about that i don't know i don't know um i'm, I'm not sure if if all of that is is up for the fans but at least it allows the fans to give an opinion uh next up ladies and gentlemen uh, which is a note from the supporters trust statement on the fan advisory board Proposal by Chelsea. Today is a momentous day for Chelsea Supporters Trust, CST, our members and Chelsea supporters. Since our inception, we have been campaigning for representation at a senior level that goes far beyond the remit of the current supporter representations. Fantastic. And this is what Daniel um, uh, Daniel Finkelstein has had to say. He's a uh, Times columnist, conservative P, dad of three, Hitler, Stalin, uh, mom and dad, and a family memoir of survival. Uh, coming 8 June 2023, ready for order. He's, um, yeah, I think he's already part of this supporter advisors uh, to the board. I think that that's where Daniel Finkelstein, um, you know, that that's where he basically comes from. As a lifelong Chelsea fan and a season ticket holder, I am proud to be serving on the board of the club I have always loved. I was also a member of the panel in the government fan-led review, and I'm committed to uh, fan engagement within the club. Through my position in the board, I want to ensure the club has the ability to respond re uh, reactively to supporters' issues, which is great, you know, at least if there is some sort of representation where people can talk about all the issues that we're having right now, um, especially around the manager. I, I think I think, I think, think it'll be, this is a positive move uh you know sometimes the board sometimes the owners they need to feel what the fans feel at the end of the day all of all of this is for the fans right i mean running a football club as as todd bowley said before taking up this particular um you know ownership with chelsea and also Bali, that fans are the epicenter of everything you know without fans there is no club without fans there is no football and at the end of the day fans and their you know expectations and their needs should be should be should be what people should be talking about and that's how an expectation should be created based on um, you know what the fans really want and what the fans really want to see uh, long term and medium term through our fans forum and other communication channels we are working well to capture this feedback and will continue to develop mechanism to do so look goes on to say a whole heap of things look bottom line ladies and gentlemen I think this is um, this is a fantastic situation, and and hope something that allows us to get closer to the club and to the board and to the owners, and we can relay some of our feelings to them, and maybe some of those feelings could transpire into something fruitful. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. Is it really going to make an impact? Is this just some more of a PR spin um, that that the owners are putting on, or uh, is is it really actually going to have an impact? You know, apparently the the board will meet three times a year. Question is, who are those fans, the three supporters that are going to be selected out of the six? How are they going to be selected? Under what criteria are they going to be represented well? You don't want a particular fan that's just, you know, keep the blue flag flying high type, you know, always just positive, positive, positive. I, I think, look, being negative for the sake of being negative is wrong as well, but just utterly being positive all the time. And I, th I think that's ridiculous as well. You need certain type of fans that's going to be able to raise big concerns and, and and be able to showcase their concerns as opposed to just coming to these meetings and just be um you know just be blend do you know what I mean? next up ladies and gentlemen chelsea are not speaking to any people to hire another coach but they are very well informed about the internal situation around grand potter this could change around the next two games they want to see a big change in results look everything is about the next two games I really don't understand why. I might do a video. There, there are some theories that's floating around as to why the owners are hanging on to Graham Potter. Many different theories. I may do a separate video just talking about the different theories and why uh, you know, they may be doing what they're doing at the moment by keeping Graham Potter. Um, and for me, it just it, it's, it's insane. I mean, haven't we seen enough? Haven't we seen enough downfall already? And haven't we seen enough that Graham Potter simply not getting a tune? I don't understand what... You know what we're going to get out of giving him an opportunity to turn things around against Leeds and Dortmund, and it could very well 
get pear shaped and it could go even further down the drain and then we can get eliminated from the Champions League, which will be such a bummer for the season. That would mean that's it. Everything is done. And at that point, I'd be like, why are you even getting rid of Grand Potter now? You might as well just keep him and then reassess the situation at the end of the season. Right now, there's something that we can still salvage and it makes sense to get a new manager. But for some reason, the owners are just adamant they're adamant and these are the theories that i'll talk about in another video chelsea are trying to still uh chelsea are still trying to protect grand potter but are also internally trying to understand why things are not working which is important yeah why aren't they working you know what what's going on why isn't grand potter being able to get a tune out of these uh group and being able to get some results it's a it's a good team. Like, I don't understand. The pressure is growing. The situation can change quickly depending on the next couple of results, uh, which is, um, we'll see. We'll see. Look, I'm not, I'm not one bit confident. I am not one bit confident. In fact, I'm actually confident for Leeds to beat us at home. And then Dortmund, look, they're unbeaten um, in, in 2023, apparently. So, yeah, I know next two games are at home, but I'm not one bit confident. We'll see what happens. Raheem Sterling has no desire to leave Chelsea. He still believes in the project. He signed up for the summer, which is great news. Um, I still think, I still think he's one of those players that has zero respect for Grand Potter. I personally think, I don't think he signed up to join Chelsea thinking it's going to be you know, under Grand Potter. If, if he knew that Grand Potter wasn't going to be a long-term manager, sorry, uh, Thomas Tuchel wasn't going to be a uh, long-term manager at Chelsea Football Club, then I don't think he signs for Chelsea. I think he goes elsewhere. Um, and, and, you know, he's come in, Tuchel got sacked, now he's got Grand Potter. I'm pretty certain he's one of those players just thinking, do you know what, I, I never signed up for this. I, this is not what my expectation was. I just get the feeling. This is a personal feeling. Um, and I feel like Kovacic is another one like that. Mendy definitely on Aubameyang as well. Look, I could be very wrong, but I just get the vibe. Raheem Sterling is one of those players that just, yeah, doesn't feel right with Grand Potter. I understand that Raheem Sterling is also under consideration to take the captain's armband in these next few matches. As it stands, but James and Sterling are the players being considered to take the armband temporarily. Now, you guys all know, obviously, um, you know, Thiago Silva is out for five to six weeks. So there goes our captain for the time being. Obviously, Aspilicueta is still there. Basby is more of a big part player, doesn't really start regular, on a regular basis. If he does end up starting against Leeds, you best believe he will be the captain. But I would find it very strange if he starts ahead of Reese James, um, unless we go with a back three and we play Aspilicueta as, as a right CB. But then again, I'd probably have Chalaba ahead of that. So yeah, it does pose a question who should be the captain? Look, personally, Raheem Sterling for me, yes. You know, he's the most senior member there, experienced player, um, has won everything with Man City pretty much except for the Champions League. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would go with Raheem Sterling direction because I just get the feeling if Graham Potter still sticks around at Chelsea Football Club, I think Raheem Sterling, Sterling will move on. And personally, I'm, I'm okay with it. As much as I love Raheem Sterling and I would love him to stick around and stay at Chelsea, I think there's damn good quality in Raheem Sterling. He just, you know, we just need to click as a unit. And I know we're going to get the best out of Raheem Sterling very, very soon. Um, but I just get the feeling if Grand Potter sticks around, even for next season, he, he's probably going to be one of those ones that are going to reach out to his agent and say that oh, I probably want to leave. Um, I don't think he's extremely, even though we just saw a report he's saying that, you know, um, he's potentially going to stay. Well, Raheem Sterling has no desire to leave Chelsea. I just feel like if, if it continues next season with Graham Potter, he's potentially going to leave. So from that basis, and not just from that basis, I just think maybe it's 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 probably the right time to give someone like Reese James the uh, captain's armband right now. I know it's come a bit too early. I would have liked to wait maybe another season uh, at least. Um, Thiago Silva is sticking around next season, and you best believe Thiago Silva should be the captain of Chelsea Football Club next season. Um, for the time being, on a temporary basis, why not? Let's just check him out. Let's just see how Reese James reacts to the armband. I think he might, he might, he might take on that responsibility. I feel like he'll, he'll grow a little bit more. Um, you know, I'm not saying physically. Physically, he's a beast, but I think from an emotional standpoint, I think he might grow a little bit more in that added responsibility, as if he doesn't like feel like he's 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 one of the faces of Chelsea Football Club. But knowing from a you know from a from a confirmation point of view like he is going to be the captain over the next five to six weeks until Thiago Silva comes back um, as I said Asby is always there of course but on field 
uh, if Aspie's not there and Thiago Silva obviously injured. I think I think Reese James might take that responsibility quite positively, and I would love to see how he carries as a as a as a captain. Um, I think he's got the qualities to be a captain. Everyone talks so highly about him. He may not be one of those vocal captains, but I think with his performances, he could be a captain that that drives uh, and motivates the rest of the team. So I would actually give it to Reese James. But ladies and gentlemen, you let me know. Two names could be floating around: Raheem Sterling and Reese James. My personal choice would be Reese James. Um, with Raheem Sterling, I just feel like, is his headspace entirely at Chelsea? I'm not sure. Another name that could be thrown around for captaincy is Matija Kovacic, but I also think Matija Kovacic is probably not respecting Graham Potter at the time being, uh, and I don't know how the captains will go down. Uh, Matija Kovacic, look, during the World Cup, he didn't even miss a single game. Before the World Cup, he was missing games. Yes, through injuries, no problems. And now post the World Cup as well, he's missing games through injuries and illness. Um, and it just doesn't look the same. During the World Cup, you could see the passion and desire for Croatia. And for Chelsea right now, it's just not the same. And I know, I feel I feel that he's one of those players that's hurting that Thomas Tuchel went. Yeah, he was, his connection with Thomas Tuchel was immense. Um, and I don't think he feels the same way for Graham Potter. Uh, there, there are a lot of players that probably like Graham Potter and understand that he's probably not going to win anything, but they still like him. But then there are a lot of players... Um, well, there are a handful of players that just don't respect Grand Potter in that level. I feel like Kovacic, Sterling, Aubameyang, Mendy, they're the players that probably think, how is this guy Chelsea manager? Um, full stop. So here's a little bit about Matteo Kovacic. Kovacic's future is open. He's one of the players who could be on the move, but I understand that no final decision has been made yet on his contract situation. It will be discussed later this year. Look, this is from Fabrizio Romano. Um I won't be surprised if he moves. I really won't be surprised. There's been rumors that he's, he's potentially uh, could be moving to Man City. Look, you're probably going to do well. Man City, they're going to get... Uh, well, I, th I think Gundogan is leaving at the end of this season. There could be other players that's leaving. Kovacic under Pep Guardiola would ball. I just get the feeling Pep will get so much out of Kovacic. You could even start seeing him producing assists and goals. Um, you know, that's a massive lacking from Kovacic with Chelsea Football Club. There's just no end product at the uh, at, at times where we really, really need it. Um, look, he's a quality player. You know, press resistant. If you want a particular player that to build up from the back and when opposition is pressing, he can wiggle through and drive through and create a lot of, you know, chaos in midfield. It's just the final delivery. But I don't always blame him for the final delivery. Sometimes the final delivery is there and our players just simply kind of finish their dinner. Um I feel like if he does go to Man City, I would hate him to go to Man City. I don't want him to go to a rival. But at the end of the day, these players will do whatever they need to do to look after their future. And if I think at the end of this season, there, there may just be only two more seasons or maybe, yeah, I think two more seasons left for Matej Kovacic since he signed. So, you know, Chelsea will be in a situation where, you know, if the player is not keen to stay and, and he wants to go to Man City, they'll probably be keen to sell him. Uh, and make some money out of it. And we need to balance our books and we need to get rid of some of the players. He's not a particular player that I'd like to let go of, but I could imagine if he's not keen to stick around and he doesn't believe in this project anymore, I could imagine him leaving. Unless we make something drastic and we get a new manager and maybe Matija Kovacic could stick around. But I think as long as Graham Potter is here, I don't think he will stick around. Last but not least, Matija Kovacic was in training today. He missed the defeat. He missed the defeat to Tottenham with an illness. Angela Kante and Christian Pulisic continue to take some part in Chelsea training sessions as they step up their comebacks, which is great to see and hear. Kante, I think, will be a fantastic addition to the team. Christian Pulisic, once again, another one of those players that how are you going to get game time? <laughs> Seriously, look at all the wingers that we have now, right now. You're, sometimes he may not even be part of the squad. So he better start looking for a new club. Uh, ASAP, come summer, he should leave. He must leave. He must. Um, the word was that as soon as Budry came in, Christian Pulisic was potentially going to uh, be moved on as well. So look, ladies and gentlemen, it's strange, man. It's strange at the moment where the club is. There's a lot of players that I feel like they don't want to be here, uh, which is fine. Get rid of them. There's a lot of players I feel like they're just sort of moving with the flow. Um, they can see that the manager, you know, is not ruthless. So they're just enjoying a paycheck. And yeah, what are the owners doing with the with the, with the the manager? What are we doing with Leeds and Dortmund giving, you know, Grand Potter one more chance to see what, to see what, even if he does win, he needs to prove us 
for the long run, uh, Jeremy, until the end of the season. I'm not going to just turn around and say if he does get a victory against Leeds and Dortmund, oh, that's it, you know, whoop de doo you're back. No, uh, we have to see long-term what's going on. But yeah, the FAB, the FAB, the Fan Advisory Board, uh, which is an interesting concept. Let's see what happens in there. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about everything we talked about. Hope you've enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you have. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Um, sorry we couldn't do a live earlier today. I was just busy. Uh, hopefully I can do a live tomorrow and talk about everything uh, latest in Chelsea. Until next time, everyone, take care. See ya.